Now that the limbs are complete, we're going to move to the facial features of Pip, and we're going to start by positioning the eyes where they should be and trimming the snout. You need two pins with glass heads on them, and we're going to locate the position of the eye across the bridge of the nose. The position of the eye basically is, is where this shape is deepest, and your pin will go either on the outer side of the gusset or on the inner side but we're placing the pins here initially just to ensure that we don't cut the pile back too far up onto the forehead for clipping the nose. When clipping the nose use a sharp pair of scissors and you're going to start from the front all the way up to where the eyes are located. We're going to be cutting this section of the head gusset. If you want you can secure this fur on either side of the gusset with some masking tape so you don't cut that and very carefully from the front of the nose you're going to snip the fur until it has a bristle left and the backing of the mohair is exposed. This gives you a nice clean snout especially around this area for embroidering your nose. If you want, you can leave some of this fur here until you've inserted your eyes and then we can trim a little bit more around each side of the eye. We're now going to position the eyes and uh, although Pip has a size 8mm eye in this kit, you may want to play around with different size eyes because they will change the look of your bear. For example, if we put a size 9 in, which is a larger eye, you will see the effect compared to a smaller eye. These eyes basically have a pin on the base and they get pinned into the bear's head. That's a larger eye. Now if we took that out and put a smaller eye in, you would see the difference. We're now going to insert the eyes. You have the position for the placement of the eyes. You're now going to very carefully remove one of the pins and make a hole because the glass eye has a loop that has to be inserted into the head. Take your glass eye. If necessary, you can very carefully pull the loop together. We're then going to insert some strong bear makers floss through the loop of the eye. I've taken a fairly long strand, fold it in half and thread the tails through the loop of the eye. The tail is then going to go through the other loop and you're going to make a slip knot so it fits securely behind the loop of the eye. This will then get threaded through a long needle The needle is going to go from the front of the head, through the head, down to the base in the centre of the head at the back, just be above the disc. Pull that through so that the thread extends out at the back of the head. The one eye is now in position. This is now going to be repeated for the other eye. Now inserting the second eye. Pushing the needle through to the base, pull the eye in and the thread comes out the back. With both tails extending out the back, make a knot and then carefully start pulling it tight. If you don't have anyone to help you, it's a good idea to wrap these threads around your fingers, put your thumbs over the eyes 
and as you do so push the eyes from the front and pull from the back on those threads to give you definition on the facial features. Then you're going to make another knot, a second knot. And pull that tight as well. Check the bear's eyes to make sure that they're in the correct position and that you're satisfied that they are sinking into the facial features. And then you're going to thread these threads on a needle, do a small back stitch, and lose the thread into the head. Small back stitch into the head, pull it tight and cut the thread. We're now going to position the ears on Pip's head. First of all, take your fingers and tuck in the seam allowance of the ear to the inside. Thread your needle with some bee makers floss and catch the center of the ear right on the edge with three straight stitches. You're then going to take long pins and on either side of the ear position a pin because it'll be easier to place this on Pip's head and then using the gusset seam as a guideline Place the one end of the ear on the seam allowance. Take this thread to the back and position your ear. Repeat that for the other ear. It's a good idea to cup the ear slightly on the bear's head so it doesn't lie flat. And I've done that by pulling the pin's position forward on the ears and as you pull this thread back that you've made in the center of the ear, that is going to enhance that curvature of the ear. Pull it back and then make a back stitch into the head to secure that position of the ear. Then you're going to continue with your ladder stitch, making a stitch in the ear, pulling it down and securing it into the head. Go around all the way to the base of the ear, at the bottom. And pull it tight. You can then remove this pin and stitch in the front of the ear. Now because it's a little difficult to stitch on the curve of the ear, you can take your needle through from the front of the ear to the back using a stab stitch and then come from the back again to the front. Finishing with your ladder stitch at the top and then finally you're going to go around to the back of the ear back to the center where you started. You're then going to end off with a back stitch and snip the thread. I'm now going to show you how to um, mark and embroider Pip's nose and mouth. And although there are many different ways of doing that, I'd like to show you the method whereby I put some pins in the position that I want the nose to be. So on this particular bear, I'm going to be doing a triangular shaped nose. I'll put three pins, take a length of embroidery thread, 
and wrap that around the pins to determine the size and the shape of the bee's nose and also whether you're happy with a black thread or you could change it to a brown thread perhaps. If that is the size that you want the nose to be, you're going to leave the pins in position and unwrap the embroidery thread. Then we need to thread a darning needle um, and then we're going to start embroidering the nose. We're going to be outlining the nose with three straight stitches. Start by inserting the needle underneath this fold and bring it out in the center of your triangular shape and make a small back stitch just to get started. You're then going to insert the needle and bring it out at the first pin, removing the pin at the same time. This little tail is going to get cut off later on. Take your thread across to this pin position and then push the needle down to the base of the triangle where the bottom of the nose is going to be. You've made, now made your first stitch across the top. Take this thread back up to that position and finally your third stitch down. Insert the needle at the bottom and then bring your needle out just at the top of your top stitch, pulling tight as you go. You're now ready to start embroidering and what we're going to do is be using a satin stitch which will come from the top down to the bottom and you will fill that area in first of all from the centre to the left and then from the centre to the right. So at this stage you can swivel the head around, pull your thread down, insert the needle in here and bring it out next to the first stitch. Again, take that down to the base, put your needle in and continue in this way until you've completely filled that area with a satin stitch. Before you make your last stitch um, on the nose, it's a good idea to remove this little tail here. So merely snip that off. And the next thing you're going to do is now determine what your mouth is going to look like. We're going to do a basic inverted Y. Um, so what I, again, I like to do is position some pins and then wrap the thread before I actually stitch the nose to get some idea of what it's going to look like. At that stage you can then also still change the, the look if you want. Take your thread that is on your needle and very carefully wrap to determine the mouth you're going to get. If you're happy with that, merely unwrap. You're going to do your last stitch on the nose and we're going to do a fly stitch. So you're going to bring your needle through the nose area down to the mouth where this pin is positioned. Make a straight stitch across to this pin position and push your needle up to this point here which is the beginning of the septum line. Lift your thread up to create that septum line on the bear's face. You're then going to position your needle in the middle of the little triangle at the base and take the needle out to the back of the head just above the disc and you're going to end it off. You might need some pliers to assist you here. Push from the front and then pull from the back. You then make a small back stitch underneath the pile, pull it tight and snip the thread. You may want to identify your bear. Um, we're going to insert a little shorter label down the centre back seam, merely pin it onto 
the open seam and then attach it by hand with a few back stitches. This will then get secured a second time when you close the opening up at the back.